Joining me today from Queensland, Australia is a fighter I'm really excited about. He TKO'd his last opponent at Eternal MMA 73, and it was a beautiful performance. I wanted to talk to this guy because he is a really exciting fighter. I like watching exciting fights. You should too. I asked him to come on my show. He's joining me today, Mr. Liam Brewster. Liam, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I have to tell you, your last performance, I was really impressed with every single thing that you did. And what uh, kind of, it was kind of a shit show though. Um, I've never seen, I've watched a lot of MMA, hundreds of bouts. I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. You wheel kick this guy right in the liver. You end the fight, but not really. For the people who have not seen that fight, I'd love to get your thoughts on uh, the bout. If you could unpack that for me, because a lot of crazy shit happened, man. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, so I don't get it either because, like, I, I knew as soon as I threw that spinning back kick to the liver, I knew he was going down. Like, I'd just seen that reaction. And I was like, my reaction, whenever I see someone go down, I'm going in for the finish, you know? And, like, for the referee to jump in front of me, like, and think it was a low blow, I'm like, come on, man. Like, are you crazy? And then and I was like, all right, well, I've, just, I've got to keep going. I just can't – I've got to get in there. I've got to try and finish this guy. But, like, the fight was so back and forth. Like, Wyatt like, – I give all the props to Wyatt and the guys at Scrappy MMA that had such a great game plan for me. But it's just like – I felt I was winning on the hands in every single combination and things like that. I give props to him with the with the wrestling, but it's like my my team, my especially my main team and David Martinez, putting me in all these sorts of positions and working my jujitsu to get out get out of all these tough positions. It, I can't thank them enough for that. And it's just like my mentality in fights is a, I want to war. Mm -hmm. The only way to beat me is to either knock me out. Or put me to sleep. You did a lot. I, I agree with your assessment. And in fact, listen, I am not a judge and I get in trouble all the time for my opinions. That's why I mostly keep them to myself. But I will tell you, I watched that fight. I gave him the third, but I gave you the first two. I don't, I don't understand. I don't see. I know two of the judges uh, had it 30, 27 for Frazier, but I looked at that. I'm like, I don't understand how you could score it that way when the fight was essentially over. Like, I, yeah. I like, I like, Oh, okay. Like I disagree with giving him the second round, but to not give you the first round, despite what had happened, like that didn't compute to me. So when two referee or I'm sorry, when two judges gave him a 30, 27, I was just like the meth amphetamine must be really good in Australia because I just, <laughs> I, I saw a very different fight. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I believed in my ability. I, I believed in myself. I thought I won the first two. Like, yeah, yeah. I did not agree with the judging at all. And, like, even to hear from the head promoter, uh, Cam O'Neill, like, he didn't agree with the judging for that fight and to say I got robbed. Like, yeah, I, I was a bit disappointed. But at the end of the day, my my teammate, John Fraser, he gave me a great perspective on it. It's like you're doing an apprenticeship. It's it's not a loss, it's a lesson. You take the lessons and you grow from them. And this is the first time I think in the history of my show I've ever said this. If that were a professional bout, I would be appealing that. I would say it. No, absolutely not. I'm not taking that L. Like worse, like, okay, fine. You want to no contest it? Okay, we'll go for that. But I'm not taking that L. I would appeal it. You know, being as it's amateurs, I don't know if it's really worth your time. Yeah, that's the way I sort of looked at it too. I spoke to my manager, Jane Martinez, and we came up with that decision. It's just like like with the amateur side, it's not really worth it, like a no contest because like at the end of the day, when you're an amateur, your record doesn't really matter. It's more on the pro side. I'm done with the amateur scene. Like I've done everything that I've said I've wanted to do. I've captured an amateur championship. I've had multiple knockouts and multiple weight classes. And now it's my turn to hit the featherweight division and make my rise in the Australian featherweight rankings. You know what I mean? I think that's perfect. So, and that segues right into what I was just getting ready to ask you. And it was essentially that, you know, looking back at your amateur career, you're now in like the athletic prime of your life. And I was just getting ready to ask you like, Hey, like what, what more was it that you were trying to achieve before you end up going pro and, 
sounds like, you know, you're mostly satisfied. You may not have gotten the result, but you're mostly satisfied with the performance and, and did, did your abilities and what you were able to demonstrate in the last bout is that, was that somewhat of a driving force uh, that made it to where you and Jane were like, yeah, it's probably time. Yeah. hundred percent. Like I've been coming to this uh, decision for a while. It's like, cause with my job being a diesel fitter in the mining industry and like trying to, to take time off work to get ready for fights and things like that, where I'm not getting paid to, uh, to fight, you know what I mean? And it's like, it takes an effect and it's like, I want to start getting paid to fight, you know, like, cause I've got a livelihood. I've got a life that I need to pay for. I've got bills and things like that. And it's like, if I want to get noticed, it's time to go pro. Like I've learned so much from my team at Ignite Martial Arts and like, we're always developing. Like you can see in our results in our team, like we've got multiple champions in every single weight class and we've just had, guys represent the country we've had four team members represent australia in the in the world championships and come up with great results and also we got australian champions like david martinez and john fraser and jamie editor like we're just we're just built different at ignite and we play that all into ryan dunstan like what he does for us and what he puts us through it uh it just elevates our performances speaking of your gym is uh Aaron Parmley, is he like as funny in real life as he is on Instagram? 100%. <laughs> Aaron is probably one of the most funniest guys I've ever, ever met in my entire life. And it's the same with Lonnie Philly Mahala. Like those two are just one of a kind. Like they're like just what they do on Instagram and how they are in the gym. It's just like, it's so entertaining and just like watching them do their fun, funny shit. It just, it brings great energy to the, to the guys in the team. Never talked to him in my life, but I saw the things that he was pu- putting up on Instagram and I'd laugh like almost every day. So I just started like sending him funny shit like randomly one day. So yeah, never really exchanged words with him. But uh, yeah, we go back and forth sending each other like offensive memes and shit. I think it's funny. <laughs> I tell you what, man, it, like I tell you what, man, like he's the most funniest dude I ever I've ever met, but he is probably one of the most savage teammates i've ever spied against and just like his skill with his taekwondo and his striking and his wrestling it's like outside the cage he's funny as hell but when he's in the cage he's a fucking monster i love watch i've 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 seen his resume i've seen what he's able to do he's got a few fights that are floating out there on the internet and i've watched them i'm like wow he's a special a special guy a special talent let's shift gears here and i wanted to talk more about your story You've already kind of like mentioned a few things about it. I put a piece out about you on my website. It was like a month or two ago. And I and I I I want I wrote about your profession. I wrote about what it is that you do because I found out a lot of things about Australian industry in that piece mm. I put out. I didn't know I didn't realize yeah. like the mining industry was like as significant. Like that's a big deal where you're from. I know a lot of guys uh, are involved in that line of work, but it's also incredibly demanding. Like this isn't the type of job where you're putting on a suit and tie every day and going into an air conditioned office and you do your 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. or whatever. Then you're, you know, driving your car over to the gym and getting your time in and then you go home and rinse and repeat. That That is demanding in and of itself. I live that life like it's very demanding in its own right. But your line of work is completely different. And I'd like you to talk a little bit more about what like a typical month looks like for you because it's very different compared to what a lot of other people probably do. Well, let's just say in perspective, I, I come home at the end of the day or a night shift covered in absolute oil and I'm physically exhausted. Like the mining industry is very important over in Australia. It's one of our biggest money incomes and like we supply to all countries around the world. And it just is such a high maintaining job, like maintaining like, $1.5 $1.5 million trucks and things like that, keeping them going, picking, delivering coal to wash plants and onto trains and then to get shipped off out of the country and things like that. Like my, my basic shift is a 12 and a half hour shift from five o'clock in the morning till 5.30 in the afternoon uh, and only get two lunch breaks a day. And I'm working in either extremely high temperature hot days or during on the night shifts in winter extremely freezing cold days and it's just like it's such a high demanding job but 
when you're making the kind of money that you make, it's kind of hard not to really truly complain about it. Sure. And one of the things that, um, you know, because it's like a, I imagine like day in and day out, a physically demanding job, like recovery has got to be so important for you, but I, I'm trying to figure out how you do that because, so you do that for days on end and then on your on your leisure time you're going to an mma gym and getting the hell beat out of you again there too so i'm wondering like what's holding you together like it's got to be a bunch of like glue and you know tape and <laughs> i don't know what, i don't know what the hell um, <laughs> uh, it's my mindset you know it's like it's because my when i'm so focused and determined to achieve this goal that i've had in i want to make a career out of fighting you know like i am I owe all my um, motivation and my dreaming to my pop because he was my biggest inspiration in my life. And he was a boxer back in his day. And he just said, like, if you've ever got a dream or a goal, you you sacrifice so much to achieve it. And that's always been my mentality because I've always loved fighting. I've always been into combat sport. Even since I was a kid growing up in Moranbar, like I used to box on with some of my best mates and, and my sister, for example, like she used to beat the living hell out of me as a kid. And it's just like growing up from a small coal mining community, you basically got to fight. You've got a dream to get out of these sort of positions. You know what I mean? And I've got such great support system behind me that always like teach, like tell me to chase your dream and always go for something that you, that you want to. And like um, dream big, dream big or go home. You know, there's a lot of sacrifices, a lot of demand, but you're getting in the work and you're active. Like, I, I, you know, you go on to like Sure Dog, you go on to Tapology, and you see what you've been able to do, and it's like activity. And you know, given the fact that uh, you pretty much kicked off your career, and then the pandemic shuts everything down, but by and large, I mean, you've been able to go into the cage like with such frequency. I, I'm just, I, I'm still trying to, I still can't quite process in my mind how you're able to sustain that pace. I still don't know how you do that. <laughs> uh, trust me, my own family doesn't know how I do it. Like my own friends and things like that, they're like, how the fuck do you do this? Like you, you work away, you do uh, seven days straight and then you come home and then you go to training and you bust your ass out day in and day out and you just don't stop. And it's like, I go back to it. It's my mentality. Mm -hmm. It's my. It's always been my mentality to to push through and like sacrifice everything to achieve my goals and my dreams and things like that. And like when the pandemic hit, like I was, on, I was one and two, I was coming off two back to back losses and it was just like, I just wanted to get back in and rectify my mistakes and improve and show Australia what I'm capable of. And like we, like here in my house, we we built mats, we had bag work and stuff, and I was getting got my teammates to come over, and we would just spar in my garage, and we would just train and just keep going. Like we we just all had that desire to get back in, and as soon as as soon as the country opened up, as soon as MMA promotions were starting, we were just like, that's it, we want to get back in, we want to show that we've stayed in, and we've um we've kept training, we've kept putting in the work to um to be raring to go when, when all this comes back, you know? Absolutely. Well, I'm really, really excited to hear that you're going pro very soon. Uh, I won't ask you when it'll happen. I'm sure I'll find out when it is I find out, but I hope, I hope at some point in the fall for you or, or maybe this winter, you can get an opportunity to get out there and, 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 and get a win. Like I know you've been busting your ass off and I, I'd really like to see you uh, start, get a nice start to your pro career because it's been a long time coming. You deserve it. Oh, hundred percent. Like, um, obviously like I'm just taking a bit of a break from the MMA scene at the moment, just like focusing on a bit of recovery at the moment. Cause obviously I broke my foot, uh, head kicking white in the second round. Uh, so I can't really do too much at the moment, but, um, yeah, like I look at it realistically on the, on the professional side of things. David's the Australian lightweight champion and it's like the lightweight division is always going to be there. But when I look at the Australian featherweight division, I look at that's got some real good studs that I know that I can, that I can go up against. Like I was getting ready to, um, if, when I beat Wyatt, I was actually getting ready to call out Josh Kuhn because oh, that's man. a guy that really, that's a guy that really excites me. It's like, even though he's got a little bit more experience than me, it's just like, 
it's a must watch fight. You got two guys that are stand and bang type fighters that are going to come forward and wanting to scrap. That's that's entertainment. Is like when you watch me or you watch him, it's a must watch fight. I think you're a must watch fight, no matter who it is that you're fighting, uh, because you're there to entertain and you're you're there for one thing and one thing only. And it's like I'm here to end the fight. And what's not Damn to like about that? I love that. I love that. Like you have that killer mentality, and that every single one of your fights are exciting to watch. Yeah, well, as I said to you, well, <laughs> as I said to you in uh, in our article, is like. If there's any UFC fighter or any fighter around the world that I sort of mimic their their mentality, it's definitely Justin Gaethje. It's like, like you go in there, it's a war. You yeah. live for the war. You live for the chaos. Like I love the chaos that the cage presents. And like when you hear the war, the roar of the crowd, and when you walk out song, especially my walk out song, it's like you can't not help like just loving the energy and just ready to get in there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, I did want to ask you one final question, Lee, and it's simply this. I, I think about you and I think about a guy that has moved heaven and earth to compete for with the frequency that you have. A lot of bouts. You've been on losing streaks. You've been on winning streaks. Like you've given up so much to get to this point. And now you're getting ready to like flip the script and move on to like this next chapter in your fighting career. And I know that you have young guys in your gym. But like pretend like, you know, you're, you know, 18, 19 years old, fresh out of like school and you look at the amateur scene and you're just like, I want to do that. That's freaking badass. Like, I want to do what that guy does. Like when you think about all the things that you've learned, like, you know, from being that like young 20 something guy to now here you are almost 30 years old. Like for anyone that's looking to like kind of get into this and like get onto like the amateur scene and just start getting uh, started on Eternal or Hex or whatever the case is like. What would your advice be to some uh, young kid out there that, you know, sees you fight and is like, man, I want to, like, knock people out like this dude? (laughs) Uh, My advice to me is, like, just go for it, man. Like, obviously, like, like I – my advice is if you want to do something in your life, don't let anyone – don't let anyone stop you from doing it. Like, the first six months of doing MMA, it's hard. Like, getting the foundations is always the hardest part. But – once you find that find that that skill that you find that's improving day in and day out, you just fall more and more in love with the sport. And also, too, the guys that you surround yourself with, the guys that are in the gym that are teaching you, that are training with you, you feed off you feed off their energy. You know what I mean? So it's like just that first initial step coming into the into the gym and actually saying, "I want to give this a crack." That's the most important thing, and having the mindset and the dream and desire to achieve it. You know. Liam, I want to give you the final word. I know that you have a lot of people that work with you and support you to make your dream happen. So if there's anyone that you'd like to thank or talk about before I let you go, I'd like to give that opportunity to you, sir. Oh, uh, sure. Well, uh, first and foremost, I can't thank, uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank my teammates at Ignite Martial Arts and the guys from Game Bread Academy to come up and put in the extra work. My coaches most importantly, Ryan Dunstan and Ryan Doyle at uh, Hellraiser Combat Lab. The things that those two guys do for me and put me through, uh, and they never give up on me. That like I can't thank them enough for all their support, especially when I when I'm away working, even just messaging me things to work on and stuff like that. It's like, and they bend over backwards to help me and improve on every aspect. Uh, also, my manager Jane Martinez, what she does for me behind the scenes, like getting me fights on eternal and um, checking in on me, like putting, putting up with my weight cut uh, complaining and stuff like that. The things that she does is I, I couldn't do this without her. And especially my family, like my mom, and my dad are my biggest rocks uh, and support systems. Well, my mom, like I've had my mom in tears watching me fight, but like, it's like, I couldn't do it without them. And just knowing that they always love me and support me, me and no matter what i choose to do in life they'll always back me and everything liam it was an absolute honor to have you on my show heal up that foot my friend i want to see you back in that cage very very soon i will put all of liam's contact information where to find him on social media that will be in the description of this video make sure you guys check that out also make sure you're following his gym because i like a lot of people from that gym i'm probably going to have more of them on my show very very soon ladies and gentlemen i'll make a suggest. i'll make a suggestion Get Jake Piper on your show, man. That 
that kid's going to be a future world champion. I'll tell you that right now. All right, perfect. Well, I will go ahead. Liam just made the call out for me. I'm going to call that dude out. He'll be on my show very, very soon. Liam, thanks for being here, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for the opportunity. You take care.